back to the Pearl Jams. Hail, hail for Ashley Struthers, Matt Klein, and Sir Stu. This is a pretty interesting progression. This, this looks like a stone special to me. Here we go. Intro. D, but we only need that much of it. So just G2, B3. The second chord is an A chord, but it's got a C sharp in the bass. So what does that mean? That means you play your A, like regular, but your ring finger goes on A4. I missed the second chord. That's the third chord. Remember that. Strike that. Willy Wonka. <laughs> okay. D, F. But we only need that much. We don't even want to play this much of the F. It's just this much. The third chord is the A with the C sharp in the bass. So there is a C sharp note in the A chord. It's the B string second fret. We're just adding it to the bass also. Excuse me. So this doesn't really change the chord all that much, except for that it puts the C sharp instead of an A in the bass. Listen to the difference. It really emphasizes that as opposed to. Not the same. Not the same. Go stone. <laughs> D, F. A with a C sharp in the bass. B flat with a D in the bass. Same explanation, one fret higher. Then, don't move your ring finger because you're going to play a G power chord. That's three, five, five. Then an A power chord. That's five, seven, seven. Then a C with an E in the bass. Same explanation as previous, but two frets higher than the B flat one. So we have A string seventh fret, D, G, B, fifth fret. This is a neat way to play a C chord. And then the last one is, oh good grief. Oh, B flat power chord. You can do that one of two places. Six, eight, eight, or one, three, three, starting on the A string. Six, eight, eight, starting on the E string. One, three, three, starting on the A string. So there is our very, you know, the, the Mozart, uh, they say is really pleasing to play on the piano. I think Stone Gossard is really pleasing to play on the guitar. I keep forgetting the F. second half of the verse we go up to C that's the eighth fret down to G or but then back to B flat every other time all the past we carry C sharp, the B flat chord with the D, 
and then a regular old G. You can tell that's right because the bass is going. This is the bass sort of creates the motion in the bridge as different from the verse, and the bass is going D B B flat G D from the D chord. Right, this is how bassists choose their notes. D from the D chord, E as a note in the A chord, B flat from the B flat chord, G from the G chord. Because there's an E and an A chord, it's the fifth. It's the it's the so, do re mi fa so of the of the A scale. So anywho, while that's going on. Presumably, Mike McCready is going like this. You need all your fingers for this. It's shadow puppet time. Ready? So we got middle finger on B3, ring finger on E3, and we're going to reach our pinky up to baby E5, take it off, and then the pointer finger gets baby E2. The middle finger doesn't move. And then the whole sometimes realize that I could only be as good as you let me. It's all just G. go back to our that's B flat G B flat into the chorus sentence for you. Anyhow, that's it for Hail Hail. Any questions? Uh, there's not really a better way to do it because because the voicings are so specific to Hail Hail. You can't just slap a capo on and play the chords and be playing Hail Hail. You know what I mean? Um, you could play the A without the, but B flat's just as hard as this B. So you just gotta just suck it up and do it this way for Pete's sake if you're gonna do Hail Hail. Anyways, keep the requests coming because we're going to do a lot of videos now that those kids are back in school and I have my life back. Have a wonderful school day. Goodbye. <laughs>